Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons, and are we at the point where professional players should emerge? This is, I was just thinking about this recently, and we now have professional Dungeon Masters. They're, this is really, really strange. They're, they're probably maybe 10 in the whole world, people who legit make their entire you know, nut, they, they, they make everything they need to live off of professional Dungeon Mastery. Most of these people are people who had YouTube channels and now just uh, literally make their living Dungeon Mastery. There aren't a lot of these people. I really don't think there are more than 10 of these in the world. There are definitely, well, 100, maybe even 1,000 people who are absolutely supplementing their, supplementing their income through professional Dungeon Mastery. But there have absolutely been professional Dungeon Masters. Uh, one of the, I think the first professional dungeon master was the Dawnforge guy, the guy over at Dawnforge. I think he was the first real professional dungeon master who was making enough to live off of from dungeon mastering games. So this has emerged, right? And so the question then becomes, should we have, should there be professional players? Right? I don't think anybody's talked about this, and I think it's a new area to explore. Okay, now why would there, now first of all, I, I, I definitely understand your question. You're like, wait, professional players, what that game we what even is that, right? And you're right, that's a really strange thing. What would a professional player be, right? So the reason that people would would logically have no problem paying for a, uh, for a professional dungeon master is dungeon mastering legit takes time and preparation, right? You need to get the maps or create the maps. You don't need to make NPCs, you need to make a narrative. You need to pay attention to what your players want. You need to craft a good story where everybody at the table is having fun and everybody at the table is being pushed to be better players and maybe even better people, right? Uh, like that That's how powerful Dungeons & Dragons is. I'm convinced Dungeons & Dragons is the only activity in the world that allows someone to enter into a fun activity and they have a distinct probable possibility of coming out the other end a better person. I don't, I don't think there's a better vector for this in the world. Like, I, I'm convinced if you play Dungeons & Dragons and you pursue it to the level of expertise or mastery, even if you don't reach that, you're going to read more, you're going to do more math, and you're going to increase your social skills, you will be a better person. I believe that Dungeons & Dragons is a powerful vector to make better people, right? And it absolutely happens when you dungeon master. There's no question. Right? Uh, because what it demands of you is very, very high. It demands you inhabit another being. A fictional being, but you're inhabiting another being. And that, that causes empathy. It causes intellectual... Pro that increases your intellectual prowess. It demands moral questions of you. It's, there's nothing in the world like it. Okay? Dungeons and Dragons is one of the most important, most powerful activities that is happening today. Right? And I understand you're like, wait, what are you talking about, Scott? D&D? &D? Yeah, I'm talking about D&D. &D. And if you don't get it, you have every not right not to get it. This is only 46 years old, right? People don't understand the value of this thing. Yet. I, I understand that, right? I understand that people don't really understand how important Dungeons & Dragons is. It's massively important, okay? All right, so, so, we're, so let's get there, right? So what would you do with a professional player, right? Who would, who would pay somebody to be a player? There's lots of things you could do to, to, to be a player. So one, I don't think people have thought about this. There are a lot of people who ache to Dungeon Master, okay? And frankly, especially with uh, with with the pandemic we're currently, currently in, a one-on-one -on -one game, a Dungeon Master might absolutely be willing to pay to have an engaged, fun, like dedicated player. Right, uh, that is. I think that market absolutely may exist, right? Online or offline, and since it would only be a one-on-one, -on -one, you could absolutely social distance. Just take a, you know, mask up and take either side of the table, finished, right? And that could be incredibly valuable to somebody, especially if they want to increase, the, if they want to improve their dungeon mastering skills, or if just they have that that ache to dungeon master. And I think a lot of people did. A lot of people have it and ache to dungeon to dungeon master. They want to build worlds. They want to create narratives. They want to press themselves intellectually, right? And that's what that's what dungeon mastering does, right? So I think it's there's really a very strong 
uh, I think there could be a market there, right? And there, it would start small, but I think there would definitely be dungeon masters willing to pay a player, okay? and that would be your first professional player. By the way, I don't think there's any. I don't think there are any professional players at this point. I know for a fact there's no one who is making their living playing. That does not exist yet, right? No, no way, no way. We just got the first professional dungeon masters where they make enough to live off of just dungeon master that is their vocation right that that just happened within the last five years right and uh which is really it's a huge milestone for the for dungeon and dragons as a life element and as an activity right as a cultural catalyst okay so uh, what are what else could you do with uh with you could do a plant you could use a professional player as a plant okay this could be incredibly helpful for online games, and I think it could even be helpful for some like uh, some local game store games when everybody goes, you know, when we get back to regular life, people are playing around the table. You could use a player to hold in check uh, players who are disengaged, to hold in check players who are trying to ruin a game, to hold in check, uh, to, to, to control some problems at a table that a dungeon master may not be able to handle themselves, right? So this would be a secretive arrangement where the dungeon master is paying a really skilled player to say, listen, I got I got a great game. I got, you know, here's a perfect example of how this could happen. I got two super engaged players, right? Then I got, you know, one of the engaged players, she has a boyfriend. That boyfriend is not engaged. He's not doing great. And then I got another player who's a problem player, right? But that problem player is best friends with one of my engaged players, right? So I need you to come in as, as my fifth player and help me control this, right? Help me help me engage the non-engaged player and maybe help me kill that player, that other character so that they're no longer in the game. Right? Like, or set, it, set that player up for, for like, so that it doesn't look like I killed them, right? In game, right? Lots and lots of circumstances, right? So the other, the other reason why someone might, and I'm not saying that I'm signing off on this. I'm just saying there could be a market for this, right? Uh, and I actually, yeah, you know what? I, I think I might even sign off on it. Like, I think I'd be okay with a covert paying of a player to come in and make the game uh, really, really enjoyable for the people who want to be there. And this is another thing is you, you're going to hear a lot of noise from D&D D &D commentators who just don't understand the reality of, of tables. It is incredibly rare that you have four skilled people who all want to be there. You almost always have two players who are really into it and then one or two other players who are there for reasons the dungeon masters don't know. Often it, it's to be close to one of the other players or maybe even the dungeon master. They're not, those people, these players are not genuinely engaged with the game. They're engaged with the people at the table, right? This is, uh, you know, I've been dungeon mastered for 30 years. Actually, I've been dungeon mastered since 1982. So that's 40 years, right? And I've seen it all. And, and there are a lot of players at a lot of tables who are not there to play Dungeons and Dragons. They're there for other reasons, right? And so, so with that, having a player in your pocket who's going to do the things that you tell them to do at the table, right? Then you could have, last, you could have the really, the halo player, right? Like the, the real professional player with a halo who is there for no other reason than a dungeon master knows, you know, hears through the grapevine and find about this professional player. And this professional player will come in and raise the level of play for everyone. Show how to make a build correctly, right? Show how to remain engaged, keep their phone down, right? Uh, show that, you know, how you roll correctly, that you don't like roll and then swipe the number up without anybody seeing and then say a value, right? You know, like they, they just show. Show, don't tell, right? And again, secretly you're paid by the Dungeon Master to come in and just l raise, the l raise the bar for everybody. Show how it's actually done because that professional player has a level of expertise and mastery. I think we're ready. I think we're ready for professional players. Some of them will be paid publicly and openly. Some will play play privately, right? And the other thing, the other thing is like, you just got like Scott. What are you talking about? This is like, why would anybody pay for somebody privately? And who's got this kind of money? Oh, trust me, tabletop role playing game uh, players definitely got the money, right? The D Dungeons and Dragons players have the money. Here's the thing: 
if you play Dungeons and Dragons, you like a game where it has 750 pages of rules. Those people are making some cash. Trust me, right? Like, trust and believe, right? There ain't a lot of you know uh, Dungeons and Dragons players who ain't making a solid nut. It's just like there ain't a, there ain't a lot of them out there, in my opinion. Uh, and so some of them have hundreds of thousands of dollars, like you know, in the bank, no family, and this is their main jam. So they got the money. The, a lot of D and D players have this kind of money. Frankly, I could do it. I could easily pay a hundred bucks a month for the next eighteen months. It wouldn't even it wouldn't be a blip. Right, I could do it. Right, and I even got that much. Right, like I'm not super wealthy or anything. I'm just not poor. I'm, I'm not poor. That's as far as I'd go, you know. But like the reality is, people got the money. It's out there, and so I think we may see the emergence of professional players. That's my thought. What do you think? Do you think 2021 will be the year we see professional players? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.